Capricorn, it's me, Stormy, and here is your horoscope for April 2020. And Capricorn, what a month. What a month. You are building, building, building. We can see that the majority of the planets are towards the lower part of the chart. Nothing actually steps up above the horizon this month. So it is a solid month where you are building. There are some things that even though you may be doing them very socially or very publicly, you're building a lot of new foundation for yourself, kind of in a quieter place. Definitely a lot of Capricorn. Capricorn building with Capricorn for sure. So it's an interesting month of allowing the building to continue and to happen and allowing that expansion to take place as well. Now we've got an event happening with um, Jupiter and Pluto coming into a conjunction this month, the first of three that they will have this year. And this is going to be in your sign. This hasn't happened for 13 years, so we know that this is full charge ahead about something brilliant that you're trying to um, bring to the surface. One of the things I keep having the vision of Capricorn is, like, truly, what you're launching here is your next identity. Like, where you're going to be, who you're going to be next in order to put something out. You're getting ready to put something out, or you're getting ready to, like, step into a new phase, or be known for something else. Something like that. But this will be your push forward, and we'll see that that happening right at the beginning of the month. As well, this is a month where Venus moves into the energy of Gemini, and as she does that, she's going to move into a phase that's called out of bounds, so that it also gives me an indicator for you this month, Capricorn, that in order to have success with things moving forward, you're going to have to step a little bit outside of your comfort zone, and it's not about outside of your comfort zone in that traditional way that we speak about it. It's literally, you've got to get out of the areas, and you've got to get out of doing things the way that you've been doing them, and get out of your own bounds. Your success will come from the people, places, and conversations that you're going to have getting out of your own bounds. So I think it's a really interesting month. Let's not hold you up. Let's jump in here, talk about it, and get you out and ready to enjoy April, okay? All right. Right at the beginning of the month, besides seeing that we've got the most majority, the most majority, I made that word up, the majority of the planets at the bottom of the chart, so we know there's some foundation building happening here. We've also got Saturn, your ruling planet, over with the energy of Mars in your second house. Now, something I want to bring your attention to is that, first of all, Saturn and Mars in the second house, this is, you've got some grounding happening here, right? This is bringing something solid. You're moving something into your life that's going to help you financially be able to take um, actions that have solid ground beneath them. Now, Mars here, over here in your second house, it wants to take a risk. He wants to go. Mars is like, let's go. Let's do it. Let's risk. Let's buy things. Let's do things. Let's take action here. But Saturn is bringing that grounding presence. So I think what you do is you're able to take a risk do something a little bit different or move something forward, but it, it's, it's also grounded. It may also be, just with Saturn there, something that is um, connected to an authority source. Maybe you're taking out a loan. Maybe you are doing something connected to the government or something in your finances with the government, obviously we're in quarantine, has changed, something like that. But there is a groundedness to the money that is happening here. Now, because it is in the energy of Aquarius, it also tells me that you're gonna likely be sharing money or something socially around your money. You know, if you're taking out that loan or, you know, if you happen to be um, a part of the grouping of people who maybe got laid off or you're doing something different with your money from a social situation, it could also produce income. It could also tell you to get social, right? This action right here is saying, hey, Capricorn, you're good. You've built these beautiful structures, but now where are you sharing that information at? Saturn is telling you to get serious about that. Speak the information that you've got. Put that video out there. If you've got a skill or a talent, take it and allow it to be social because it will add value that is not only financial, but it's the value of confidence, of self-esteem, right? But there will certainly be some permanent changes coming to your finances, Um from this energy for sure. Now, the other thing that I was looking at and considering as I was doing the general forecast for you is that because this is Aquarian energy, in the general, we also want to see what Uranus is doing because Uranus is the ruler of Aquarian energy as well. And Uranus is over here in the fifth house along with Venus. So this does tell me that likely something, something related to children, conception, joy, 
play, a new beginning to something, maybe a business, maybe a hobby that you're doing. You may be investing seriously. You may be putting some serious money towards something like that. And again, the good news here is that it is grounded while also being courageous enough to take action. But you could certainly be spending and using that money in this way um, with something different. If this does happen to be about joy for you, I want you to really enjoy it. I really want you to dig into the love that's happening here in this fifth house. You've had it in play for a while, but Capricorn, I hope you're smiling. I hope that you're laughing. I hope you're breathing in and moving towards some things that do bring you joy as well this month. So continue to have that going, okay? On the third, we're going to see Venus moving out of this fifth house, which is all about the kids, the, the joy, the play, the expression, bringing true love, trying to harmonize love and romance for you as well. And Venus is going to move up here into the energy of Gemini. Now, this is going to light up your sixth house space. So Venus is a magnetizer and a harmonizer and a benefic planet. So she is trying to bring benefit here to your sixth house area and she's gonna use Gemini qualities to get that done. So what that looks like is the sixth house is daily routines, coworkers, um, your health, your wellness, how you're being of service and interacting with other people independent projects and things live like that, live like that, live in this house as well. Venus is going to bring harmony, bring money, bring um, good things to your relationships through a lot of conversation. Gemini qualities, there's going to be conversation, there's going to be sharing of information, there's going to be um, needing to get into the details of something, right? So in this area, you could see your health starting to level out, even if it's just your mental health and wellness. You could start to feel like things are maybe starting to level out a little bit, and maybe Capricorn, it's because you're being put in a position now where you're sharing, right? You're not just holding on to information, you're sharing it so that the other person, so that your daily routine so that your employees or your employer can hear it. But there's an exchange of information that is bringing some level of peace. This could also be very much so, I think, connected to something in um, your ninth house zone, only because Gemini is a Mercury energy and so is Virgo. So I think that this could be definitely something that is showing up for you that maybe you even had a legal case or something and now it's gonna have some culmination and come to the end in some way, shape or form. And that would definitely impact your daily routine and your health and your well-being as well. Okay, on the fourth, we're gonna have um, Okay, on the same day, we're going to have Mercury and Neptune together in a conjunction here down in your third house. So this is the one thing I'll tell you. Give it a couple days before you make any really big, massive, put your signature on it level commitments to anything. Mercury and Neptune are, together are so good for creativity. They're so good for trusting your intuition, but they are not good at clear energy. This is a little bit of a foggy energy. Please don't sign any contracts. Don't sign that new lease. If you have to, of course, get in all of the details that you can, but this is a day or two that I just want to give you to know that the energy is a bit foggy there. So pay attention so that it's nothing shady is going down and affecting you down the road. Okay. All right. On the fourth, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto coming together in the conjunction. First of three that they will have um, this year. This one, they both happen to be direct. So we know we've got permission for forward motion. Now this hasn't happened in 13 years. So I want you to think back. 13 years ago, when these two came into a conjunction, you would have been starting something. Something that was going to, you were going to put your back into it. You were going to put some drive into it. And it was ultimately going to take you to the next place you were going to be in your life. Were you having a baby? Did you launch a business? What did you start 13 years ago that as you're coming back and checking in on it today, you can see that, yes, oh my God, I started this 13 years ago and I've already had success with it. This is another one of those moments. As Pluto and Jupiter come together, they speak to your expansion out into the world and your evolution. Now, in your first house, 
this is a place where it's also your identity, but I do think that this is a place where we're going to be able to see you expanded out into the world differently. You're showing up in the world differently. We know you as something different, but with this energy and them both being out of retrograde, you have full forward motion to do it. And what you start here usually is wrapped in success. We will check back in on it when we get to June, because then they'll be in retrograde and we'll get to see where do you need to make some adjustments with this energy. And then we'll see it kind of in its full flourishing in November of this year. So start something here, let yourself launch out, put your back into it. Don't fall into the trap of this South node. However, the South node wants us to stay in behaviors that we've already had, it wants us to stay in thinking. It wants us to stay in the identity that we've already have, but that's not what you're doing here. You're nurturing yourself out into the world to also promote and nurture new relationships and a new relationship with yourself out into the world. And I even genuinely, genuinely think that this launch, if you're single, this could bring a new significant partnership into your life as well. So something to keep your eyes on, all right? On the 7th, we're going to have a full moon happening in Libra right at the tip top of your chart. So the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. A shift needs to happen at work for you now. This particular Libra full moon is, of course, it's going to be at 18 degrees, but it's asking us in that work and that home life space, what's your balance? Are you in balance? Are you out of balance? Are you in balance? Are you out of balance with the relationships that you have between work and home? Now, this moon is also being in Libra ruled by Venus. Venus is over here in the sixth house um, with Gemini energy. It does give me the indicator that at this full moon, you're going to need to have some conversations. There needs to be some conversations. There needs to be some sharing of information. Um, Gemini is also over some documentation as well. So maybe you're making a, a decision. You're bringing something to a close. You're bringing, but there is information that is being exchanged, allowing the adjustment, the ending, or the acknowledgement to come out fully for you as we get to this month. And I wouldn't even be surprised, even though this moon is on the 7th, I would think that you could even be, I just keep seeing court or documents or something like that, that you could be involved with by, by the 24th, 25th of this month, um, for sure. Maybe a couple days before. Okay. All right. As we, um, Another thing I want to bring to your attention that I think is important for you to note at this moon is that Mars and Uranus will be in square with each other at this moon. Now, this is your second house and your fifth house. This could be something financially with um, children, something financially with a project, something financially with... Um, a new love affair or a new something in your world, but they are in square. So there is tension here. You need to take caution. Venus is in Gemini. Detail everything. Keep notes. Cover your hiney about everything, right? But this is a little bit of a warring energy when Mars and Uranus come together. So the tension that is under here is telling you, hey, we can't keep doing this. We've got to find a different action to get out from underneath the pressure. So this could certainly be something financial around children. Now, I will tell you too, it's interesting with many of the um, children being home and doing homeschooling from quarantine time or from shutdowns that are happening, this could also be this. You're just having a tough time. You're like, hey, we got to all go outside, right? So give yourself some grace. Give everybody a little bit of grace. This may be a little bit of a tougher full moon, but ultimately it's trying to bring something um, to flourishing, okay? On the 11th, we see Mercury leaving this energy of Pisces, moving up here into the energy of Aries in your fourth house, and will be up here with the sun. So this is an indicator that things in the home are getting different. They're getting busy. There's a lot of conversation. You're having to make decisions. Mercury is in Aries, so we're saying it. You're saying what you think. You are sharing that information. You are making decisions at home. There's a lot of conversation going. The sun is also beaming over here. So family oriented things definitely have your attention. This again, with Mercury being not only the ruler of Gemini, but also of Virgo as well, I still have this vision of court cases being settled or agreements being brought to an end, or maybe you're making a brand new agreement and it could be that new lease or something around the housing situation. This could also be because we are in quarantine and Pluto's getting ready to go into retrograde. If you needed to delay payments on something, 
you might be able to do that here as well. But ultimately, Mercury is going to bring some decisive action into your home. So don't be surprised if the home zone gets a little bit busy. This is a wonderful energy to finish projects at home that maybe need to be done that you, you didn't quite get to yet, okay? On the 19th, however, the sun, detach, Mercury, detach. Mercury is drunk. The sun is going to move over into the fifth house, into the energy of Taurus. So this, again, lights up all things with children, all things with new beginnings, conceptions of new businesses, joy, play, happiness. Continue to move out of bounds to look for what brings you joy, what makes you feel like you're really expressing your own voice. I'm going to tell you what, Capricorn, I feel like it's been a very big year for so many of you to learn to express your greater needs, to learn to express this piece of you that is a very, very big, sensual, I want partnership level heart. And even if that's just been in business, so I feel like the sun coming here bringing light heat, life, and motivation to this area has you just lit up and ready to have those conversations about a lot of sensual things, things that have to do with money and things that have to do with value. Of course, with the sun here as well, and then we're going to welcome in a new moon. Uh, the kids may be at home. There could definitely be things happening for your kids. At this new moon, though, that will be happening on the 22nd at three degrees of Taurus, you want to plant your seeds of intention for what's the fresh start that you want here, right? What's the new perspective you'd like to bring to the table? Because over the next four weeks and over the next year, you're going to definitely get to watch these things flourish and, and come out and see what seeds have been planted. But what you know about the seeds that you will plant here is that in the energy of Taurus, they are long, they are sustainable, they have endurance to them, and they are quite practical since this energy is happening in a fellow earth sign as well. On the 25th, 25th, we see Pluto stepping into retrograde. Now, I'll be making a separate Pluto and retrograde video so we can really get in depth with it. But what, what we need to know here is, first of all, Pluto will go retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn. So right there in your sign in October. On the 25th, we're going to see Pluto stepping into retrograde right here in your sign. I will be making a separate Pluto retrograde video so we can really get into the depth of it. But what we need to know for right now is that Pluto is going to start this retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn, go all the way retrograde until October, and come out at 22 degrees of Capricorn. So very slow movement. Nothing huge is going on, but at the same time, it is so big, right? Because when Pluto goes into retrograde, he's working on things in an Undercurrent. This is the place where we don't necessarily see it until we shift and change and something dies off so that something else can live. And then we can see it manifested out in the material plane. Now, having this be in Capricorn, in your sign, you are an earth sign, which means a lot of this will begin to show up in the material plane, but it really truly may start with something in your sign that you're having to go back over. Where Capricorn do you need to transform? Where are you ready for your next evolution? Because that's what Pluto is doing. He's saying, Capricorn, our identity has to die off because we've got to live as this other thing, you know? Are you, have you, have you been working for a company for a long time and now you're ready to be a business owner? What is the transition you're making in your life that takes you from being known as one thing to the other? Pluto is going to help you see how to do that, what to shed and what to put down. Now, the other thing I think about this is that it's not new. This is not necessarily anything new. It's been kind of in your purview for a little bit, but now you're getting to go back over it so that Pluto can help you make this transformation. And during the retrograde, you're going to review a lot of you, a lot of what you're known for, so that you can show up and present us something different as we get towards October. But certainly as we close out this year, it's like I just feel like you start going by a different name in some way, shape, or form, Capricorn. I think it's a really beautiful retrograde. Now, as we close out this month, we're going to see Mercury, who is hopefully not drinking anymore. <laughs> we see Mercury moving up here into the energy of Taurus, and he's going to be here until May 11th. Mercury coming into this very charged area, of course, 
kids doing homeschooling, that could definitely be a thing. You working from home, lots of busyness, lots of conversation around new Mercury, projects. Mercury, into us. We are also speaking more slowly. But the things we're talking about, the decisions that we're making, are going to have long-range impact for us. They will be steady. They will be sturdy. They will be dependable. And we will be able to build on them for many years going forward. So big decisions that you're making over here. Trust your intuition. Trust the tribe around you. Trust people who are reaching out and helping you and teaching you things that are out of the bounds of information and knowledge and experience that you already have, Capricorn, because they really are the most delicious teachers to help you move forward into whoever's coming for us next, okay? All right, Capricorns, I love you a ton. I look forward to seeing how the month manifests for you. Please keep me posted in the comment sections down below. What are the things that are playing out for you? Uh, what does it look like and just how are you doing, okay? I love you and I will see you next month. Bye.